Hi, today I'm thinking about the combo van that I was doing test on to see why it wouldn't start and it ended up being an EGR valve. And I thought about is there a quicker and easier way to test the EGR valve for flow when you can't get to it. Say the EGR valve was buried at the back of the engine and it was going to be a big job just to test it. So then I was thinking, what about using the smoke machine? If I could smoke it and see pl plenty of smoke coming out the exhaust pipe when the EGR is open, then I could plug up the EGR so it shut again and re-smoke it and see what the difference is. What's the difference in the flow of exhaust gases coming out the back? Even if it's just enough of an experiment that you could say, yes, it's worth going into the extreme of checking the EGR based on what you've seen from the amount of smoke that's coming out the back and not fully condemning an EGR based on it. So I thought I'd do the test because I haven't done it before. See what happens. Now I know that when an engine stops, one of the cylinders is maybe going to be at top dead center. And if it is, so say cylinder 1's at top dead center and cylinder 4, one of them will be on the compression stroke and the other one will be between the exhaust and the intake stroke and during that time we will have both valves slightly open and when they're both slightly open we will see a little bit of smoke going through there so that's what I wanted to make sure that to make the test fair I get the engine at TDC first so that I know one of those cylinders has got two valves slightly open to see how much flow we get through that. It's not going to be those valves aren't going to be fully open, otherwise we'd be bending valves and an interference fit engine. So they're just slightly open. So that's my test. To make it fair, I'll get it to that point first that the valves are open and do a comparison. One with the EGR valve open and the other one, because I haven't got a new EGR valve in it, I'm just going to plug it up again uh, on the pipe going into the EGR valve so it's doing the same job as the EGR valve being closed and do the test again, but it will have the valves on one of the cylinders is going to be at the point that they overlap and see what the difference in the smoke is. Here's a really old book that my dad got me when I was 16 and it's kind of out of date in a lot of things, but it's still good for other things. And I've just got it to show you this diagram here. If we look at the top of it, this is the overlap that I'm talking about. So I've got a choice of cars here for Cortina 1300 and a GT. But it shows you like the sportier one, there's more of an overlap at the top. Okay, and even at the bottom, the, the, the points at which the exhaust opens. But the only point that's overlapping is here where those two are, it's not going to be this bit is an overlapping because it's a bit like seeing a spiral, you know, or, or something. It goes from, let's just say the inlet valve's open here, the exhaust valve's still open. The exhaust valve hasn't closed yet. The inlet valve opens, the exhaust shuts just after it, and then it comes down to here. So we're at bottom dead center, but this isn't open exhaust doesn't open again there. We start the compression. So this would carry on like compression. Right? And then we've got the power. And it's a bit like a spiral going out. And then it goes to this one. So by now, the intake is shut. Otherwise you wouldn't have compression or power. Here the exhaust opens before, quite a bit before TDC, uh, bottom dead center. You can see on the sportier one it's even more. But my point is that that's not an overlap, it's just here. So even if we said that two cylinders like cylinder 2 and 3 would be at bottom dead center, they're not going to both be overlapping down there as well, so that both valves won't be open at the same time. It's going to be just one of the valves in one cylinder, the other cylinder, it would be the other valve that's open. The only point is TDC on one of the cylinders, and I hope that's clear. I know a lot of you already know that. I just thought I'd point it out that that's all I'm talking about. And this bit here where they are overlapping, they're not going to be fully open. It's only going to be a very slight amount, otherwise the valves would be hitting the pistons on a lot of engines. So um, I'll do the test and show you what I find. I'm going to check for the top dead center position of number one cylinder. 
is in this. So when I push gases up, or the air that's in the cylinder, that should rise. So I'll get that so that I know it's a TDC by turning the bottom pulley. See that white float is at the top? When I turn this pulley, this is on the compression stroke, so when it starts to go down, we know that it's on, on the power stroke. So that's what I'm doing here. Getting this to top dead center. And when I've got it right, I'll leave it there. I'm just turning, turning the bottom pillow now. There, see that started to fall? It's still going up. I'm turning the engine in a clockwise direction. There, right there, it dropped. So that's the piston going down. So if we look for something to identify that pulley, we can turn it into a circle, a whole couple of circles round. And when we get there, press TDC before the piston goes down again. So I don't know if you can see it, but I'm turning the bottom pulley. And we'll get this. Green paint's roughly coming up to TDC. I got another turn to go because that must be the exhaust and then the inlet. So this time, that's gone up at the top, right? So we know we're pushing it up. We're pushing the exhaust up. So I want to stop the green paint just before the 12 o'clock. So that I know that TDC, that's, there it's dropped. So I, I kind of already have gone too far, even though it's there, that's already dropped. So I'm already taking the piston down. So I'll do two more laps. We'll get it. Right, there's one lap. I'll maybe stop the green paint when it's right about there, where I've seen it first. And this lap right here. Right there. I don't want, don't want it to go out. Oh, that's already there. It's starting to have the, the intake. I'm going to stop it right there. This is starting to drop. So... TDC on the compression stroke, right there. That means this one is TDC between exhaust and inlet. So we'll have the slight overlap there. It's only going to be overlap on one cylinder, where they're just about TDC, top dead center. And it's not that one, so you know that's the compression and the power stroke. So it has to be this one. So I'm doing this test because I want to see how much exhaust gas comes out the back with the EGR open. And then I'll blank off the EGR. And same test again using a smoke test of through the inlet. Because some exhaust systems the EGR might be in a pain to get to position. So I, I just thought if this was going to be a wave downer where you could just quickly smoke test it there. And even if you're in that kind of unlikely event that you stop the engine and there's one of the cylinders at TDC and both the intake and the exhaust are just rocking. They're not fully open, but they're slightly open. We want to know, even if it had that, can we use a smoke test to see enough of a difference at the exhaust? So I'll give it a shot and see what happens. A bladder in there that's inflatable. And that's filled up so we can put air or smoke into here. Just filled up the machine and switch this on. Uh, and smoke. I'll leave that going for a while. It's not pressure building up. Could take quite a while for this to go down. You can see that. So I'll keep it going. See how far this goes.
This relic should go through this pipe. Through the exhaust. No. Through the intake pipe. Down to the turbo. Out of the turbo into the intercooler. And then back out the intercooler at the other side and into the intake. Because the EGR is open, it will also go through the cylinder head where this passage goes into the fifth port at the end of the manifold and make its way down the exhaust. Still got plenty of fluid in there. No pressure building it. To give you an idea how much flow, it's been a couple of minutes. So that's the sort of flow we get of smoke coming out of the exhaust. Right. The winds blow. See when the wind blows on it, it almost stops it. It's quite breezy. Oh, the wind's not getting in the way of the video. Anyway, there's the smoke. Try and get a better view of it. So it's a noticeable amount of smoke anyway. So now I'm going to plug up that valve. That's going to be the only thing that I change and see how much smoke we get doing the same test again. As before, I've plugged up at the back the pipe at both ends. A lot more force now. It can't go through the EGR, so it's finding its way out of here. Which is tight, and we had that small leak. Right, so it's forcing its way out here now instead of going out the back like it was before. The actual EGR is not leaking, it's just all coming from this thing here. Try and hold that down there, tie it on. I can slow down the leak a bit. We're actually checking the hole system in one go. If we go down to the back, see if there's a difference. That's a lot less smoke. And like I say, I've got the engine out of position, but we have valve overlap. Deliberately, because that might be somebody's question, if you smoke test the intake, and the valves are overlapping, so you've got them both, the intake and the exhaust slightly open on one of the cylinders, you're going to have smoke come out of here anyway. But I've got it set like that, at TDC, and it is very, very slight. Yeah, you can see it. I'll admit that, and I expected that. I don't know if you can see it on here like I can. It's almost... It is almost nothing, but it is enough that you can see bits of smoke come out. Okay. How can I get this so you can see it as well? But anyway, the point is you can really see a difference between testing the EGR when it's open to me blanking off the EGR like it should be when it's closed. So, and the whole point of this was if you have an EGR that's really hard to get to, that smoke, that's just coming out of that pipe. I'm going to try and tighten that up so it's more of a fair test. But I think the fact it's coming out of here proves that the EGR is plugged, like it should be. I'll try and lock that up though. Kind of put a first fuel dressing on it just to patch it up. Get the smoke to stop. Or at least reduce it. I did have a bit of smoke before. We're still at the same flow here, so it's obviously coming out of here instead. Nothing there, and that, that is with the valve overlap. Now I'm gonna. Oh, what's the next thing I could do? 
I'm trying to think if I can change the test at all, but I don't think so. I think that's that's really proof what I wanted to prove. See, there's no smoke there now. A little bit. Yeah, there is a bit. So it's kind of like when I did the first test. I'm not going to connect that pipe up at the back, so it was, a, it was an absolute pain to connect it up. The wind's blowing this stuff. It was a pain to connect it up just to do this test to show you. Um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully it's... Okay, the last bit of recording didn't work out, so I'm just going to say it again. The test seemed to be a success. I did a test with the EGR valve fitted, it was open, and the gases, you could clearly see them going out the back of the car. And then when I did the test again with the EGR valve capped off, because the valve doesn't close, so I capped off the EGR valve, so it was going to do the same thing. And you saw very little gases coming out the back, even though I did make sure the engine was at a at the point where I had valve overlap going on in one of the cylinders. So I thought that would be an important factor to keep in this test. But it was enough that you can see a difference between a little bit of smoke from valve overlap to a lot, a lot more smoke and the EGR valve being open. So it, it is quick and easy to do this test. It takes a while for the system to fill up with smoke and start coming out the back, so you have to give it a couple of minutes. I hope this test may be helpful to somebody. And thanks for watching.